St. Stephen's Green Irish, is a city centre public park in Dublin, Ireland. The current landscape of the park was designed by William Shepherd. It was officially reopened to the public on Tuesday, 27 July 1880 by Lord Ardalorn. The park is adjacent to one of Dublin's main shopping streets, Grafton Street, and to a shopping centre named for it, while on its surrounding streets are the offices of a number of public bodies as well as a stop on one of Dublin's Lewis tram lines. It is often informally called Stevens Green. At 22 acres, 89,000 square meters, it is the largest of the parks in Dublin's main Georgian Garden squares. Others include nearby Merrion Square and Fitzwilliam Square. The park is rectangular, surrounded by streets that once formed major traffic arteries through Dublin city centre, although traffic management changes implemented in 2004 during the course of the Lewis Works have greatly reduced the volume of traffic. These four bordering streets are called, respectively, St. Stephen's Green North, St. Stephen's Green South, St. Stephen's Green East and St. Stephen's Green West. History Until 1663 St. Stephen's Green was a marshy common on the edge of Dublin, used for grazing. In that year Dublin Corporation, seeing an opportunity to raise much needed revenue, decided to enclose the centre of the common and to sell land around the perimeter for building. The park was enclosed with a wall in 1664. The houses built around the green were rapidly replaced by new buildings in the Georgian style and by the end of the 18th century the green was a place of resort for the better off of the city. Much of the present-day landscape of the square comprises modern buildings, some in a replica Georgian style, and relatively little survives from the 18th and 19th centuries. In 1814 control of St. Stephen's Green passed to commissioners for the local householders, who redesigned its layout and replaced the walls with railings. After the death of Prince Albert, Queen Victoria suggested that St. Stephen's Green be renamed Albert Green and have a statue of Albert at its centre, a suggestion rejected with indignation by the Dublin Corporation and the people of the city. To the Queen's chagrin, access to the Green was restricted to local residents, until 1877, when Parliament passed an act to reopen St. Stephen's Green to the public, at the initiative of Sir A. E. Guinness, a member of the Guinness Brewing family who lived at St. Anne's Park, Rahini and at Ashford Castle. He later paid for the laying out of the green in approximately its current form, which took place in 1880, and gave it to the corporation, as representatives of the people. By way of thanks the city commissioned a statue of him, which faces the College of Surgeons. His brother Edward lived at Ivy House, which his descendants gave in 1939 to the Department of External Affairs, now the Department of Foreign Affairs. During the Easter Rising of 1916, a group of insurgents made up mainly of members of the Irish Citizen Army, under the command of Commandant Michael Mallon, his second-in-command Kit Poole, and Constance Markovich, established a position in St. Stephen's Green. They numbered between 200 and 250. They confiscated motor vehicles to establish road blocks on the streets that surround the park, and dug defensive positions in the park itself. This approach differed from that of taking up positions in buildings, adopted elsewhere in the city. 
it proved to have been unwise when elements of the British Army took up positions in the Shelbourne Hotel, at the northeastern corner of St. Stephen's Green, overlooking the park, from which they could shoot down into the entrenchments. Finding themselves in a weak position, the volunteers withdrew to the Royal College of Surgeons on the west side of the Green. During the rising, fire was temporarily halted to allow the park's groundsmen to feed the local ducks. The park is now operated by the Office of Public Works on behalf of the Irish state. Topic: <inaudible> Evolution of design. The landscaping of the park has undergone three major changes since its inception. Its first major change occurred in 1670, two rows of lime trees were planted around the perimeter, functioning as its first enclosure. At this time, the park was only accessible to the wealthy residents who owned plots around the park. In 1815, the park was redesigned by the Dublin city surveyor Arthur Neville. In his redesign, he added winding pathways and iron fences. At this time, the park was still closed to the public. During the 1860s, the campaign to make the park publicly accessible was underway, and the city engineer, George W. Hemmons, proposed a new design to make the park as walkable and as functionally practical as possible. This included creating four gates at each corner of the park that would be linked by the extant pathways designed by Neville. This plan was eventually abandoned, most likely due to the fact that Hemans was employed by Dublin Corporation. However, many of Hemans's designs, like the addition of the gates and connecting pathways, were included in the final plans submitted by William Shepherd, the principal designer responsible for the landscape of the park as we know it today, and engineer A.L. Cousins, sponsored by Lord Ardalorn. Ardalorn also played a significant role in the planning and importing of the exotic trees and plants that would be installed in the park. <laughs> park layout While the central park of St. Stephen's Green is one of three ancient commons in the city, its current layout owes much to the restorations of the 1800s see history above. The grounds are roughly rectangular, measuring approximately 550 by 450 meters, and are centered on a formal garden. One of the more unusual aspects of the park lies on the northwest corner of this central area, a garden for the blind with scented plants, which can withstand handling, and are labeled in braille. Further north again and spanning much of the length of the park is a large lake. Home to ducks and other water fowl, the lake is fed by an artificial waterfall, spanned by O'Connell Bridge, and fronted by an ornamental gazebo. The lakes in the park are fed from the Grand Canal at Portobello. To the south side of the main garden circle is more open heath surrounding a bandstand, and often frequented by lunching students, workers and shoppers on Dublin's sunnier days. There is also a playground separated into junior and senior areas which was refurbished in 2010. Other notable features include the Fusilier's Arch at the Grafton Street corner which commemorates the Royal Dublin Fusiliers who died in the Second Boer War A fountain representing the three fates inside the Leeson Street Gate. The statue was designed by Joseph Wackel in bronze in 1956. 
it was a gift from the German people in thanks for Irish help to refugee children following World War II. Up to 500 children found foster homes in Ireland in a project named Operation Shamrock. A seated statue of Lord Ardalorn on the western side, the man who gave the green to the city, facing the Royal College of Surgeons which he also sponsored again, see history above. The Yates Memorial Garden with a sculpture by Henry Moore A bust of James Joyce facing his former university at Newman House a memorial to the Fenian leader Jeremiah O'Donovan Rosser near the Grafton Street entrance. A bronze statue at the Merion Row corner of Theobald Wolfe Tone, the leader of the 1798 Rebellion. A memorial to the Great Famine of 1845–1850 by Edward Delaney. A bust of Constance Markovich on the south of the Central Garden see history above. A statue of Robert Emmett standing opposite his birthplace now demolished at No. 124 A memorial bust of Thomas Kettle, Fatality of the Great War the attempt to erect a commemorative portrait bust of Kettle was beset by controversy until it was finally placed, without official unveiling, in the center section. Notable addresses Ivy House on the south side was created from the joining of two earlier houses numbers 80 and 81 by Benjamin Guinness in the 1860s. It was donated to the Irish state by the Guinness family in 1939, and now houses the main offices of the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Also on the south side of St. Stephen's Green are Newman House numbers 85 and 86, after John Henry Newman and University Church. These are home to the Catholic University of Ireland, which was founded in the 19th century. It is linked with University College Dublin, but is no longer active educationally in its own right. The Unitarian Church Dublin, built in the Gothic Revival style, is located on the west side of St. Stephen's Green. Also on the west side is the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland no. 123, home to the oldest of the Republic of Ireland's six medical schools. On the west side, at the top of Grafton Street, is the Stevens Green Shopping Centre, built in October 1988. It was, at the time, Ireland's largest shopping centre. Its style was intended to represent a conservatory on the side facing the green and to mirror the brickwork design of the opposing Gaiety Theatre on South King Street. On the north side of St. Stephen's Green, there were four but are now two clubs originally gentlemen's clubs, the Hibernian United Services Club no. 8, closed in 2002, the Stephen's Green Hibernian Club no. 9, originally the Stephen's Green Club, prior to its merger with the Hibernian United Services Club, the "...friendly brothers of St. Patrick." Number 22 now closed and the Kildare Street and University Club number 17 This side of the green also has the historic Shelbourne Hotel and the recently opened Little Museum of Dublin which is housed in a restored Georgian townhouse Loreto College, St. Stephen's Green, one of Ireland's best known fee paying schools for girls, is located at No. 53, on the east side of the Green. St. Vincent's Hospital, now located in a suburb on the south side of Dublin, was formerly located in buildings on the east side of St. Stephen's Green and on Leeson Street.
Topic: Transport. Dublin Bus Routes 7B, 7D, 11, 32X, 37, 41X, 44, 46A, 61, 84X, 145, 155 and 757 all have stops along the east side of the square. The Green Line of the Lewis Tram System stops at the St. Stephen's Green Stop on the western side of the park, with Lewis Cross City services continuing to Broombridge Station in Cabra. See also List of streets and squares in Dublin Topic Notes Topic External Links Stevens Green Shopping Centre Website A Virtual Walking Tour of Stevens Green